unbearable sorrow. The world on your mind, betrayed by a kiss of a friend, you were taken by your own free will, rejected and disowned by those you came to heal. Stripped of your clothes, you were mocked, you were beaten Made a king of fools A crown of sorrow driven deep into your brow Yeah, you make no sound What you went through to love me I'll never understand What was my mind away You love me as I am They called for Barabbas A king for a thief Parading your kindness Like rags through the streets And draped with the weight of the world On your shoulders As you climb that hill A burden far too great For flesh and bone to bear Rest at your arms as you welcome those Roman nails Your body frail The very hands that shape the world hung up to bleed Lifted on high, crucified in a new no sin The Nazarene the Son of Man, the Lamb of God, Emmanuel, given to die. Why you went through to love me, I'll never understand. What blows my mind away? You love me as I am A precious redeemer Lamb that was slain Oh, for the whole Friend of the sinner, grace to my soul, and death is defeated. Now my sin is gone, and I'm blown away, and I'm
Good Friday is the tension between celebration and sorrow. It's easy to want to jump too quickly to the empty tomb of Easter Sunday and the victory that that empty tomb represents, but we don't want to do that too quickly. You know, whenever the team wins the World Series or a Super Bowl, the celebration is intense. People are high-fiving, they're shouting, they're jumping up and down. And the reason why the celebration is so intense is because the sorrow of the season was so intense. All of the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to get to that celebration victory. And see, that's what Good Friday represents for us. The reason why Easter is so good is because of the pain of the sorrow that we feel on Good Friday. You see, on this Good Friday, we recognize that there was a God who gave up all so that we could be reconciled to him. On Good Friday, the skies are at their darkest. On, on Good Friday, it seems as if um, all hope was lost, but Jesus has the final say. And the Bible describes Jesus as a man of sorrows. And we understand why when we recognize the pain of the cross that he had to endure. The prophet Isaiah puts the sorrows of Jesus so well when he describes it this way. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Jesus did that for you and me so that we might experience the victory, that we might experience reconciliation with God. For you and me to know our heavenly father, Jesus had to know intense grief. For you and me to be reconciled to God, Jesus had to be forsaken. For, for you and me to have our sins atoned for, Jesus had to take on our sins. John chapter 12, verse 27 it says, now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray, Father, save me from this hour? But this is the very reason I came. You see, on this Good Friday, Jesus tasted the bitterness so that we could taste the sweetness of a reconciled relationship with God. Easter Sunday isn't nearly the celebration that it is without recognizing first the deep sorrow of Good Friday. So I wanna encourage you to take just a, a few minutes to reflect upon that sorrow. Reflect upon the sin and the shame in your life and in mine that Jesus willingly took upon himself so that we could have victory on this day.
cross deals with the penalty of sin. It also addresses the separation that that sin created, both with God and with others. And on this Good Friday, we're invited to give all of that up to God, to confess it to Him, the good, the bad, and the ugly. As we see the cross of Jesus, we're invited to take up our own cross, which is exactly the invitation that He gives us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, Jesus would say to the disciples, as well as to you and me today, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. You see, Rome would crucify criminals and that cross signified their death. But to the Christian, when we bear a cross, this leads to life but we've got to first take up our cross. We've got to first come and lay down maybe what we've been holding on to in repentance. And so I want to ask you to spend some time reflecting on that on this Good Friday. What is your cross that you need to take up? What is that thing you need to lay down, that thing that you need to repent of and come clean by? Verse 25 of that same passage says this, if you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will find it.
On the night before Jesus' crucifixion, he leads the disciples into an upper room and they share a meal together called the Last Supper. As Jesus has them sitting around the table, he reaches for some bread and he takes the bread and he breaks it and he passes it to each of the disciples saying that this bread represented, represented his body broken for each one of them. And he said, as often as you take the bread, do this in remembrance of me. Then Jesus took some wine and he poured it into a cup and he said that this wine represented the blood of the new covenant. And he said, this, this blood atones your sin and reconciles you before God. And as often as you take it, do this in remembrance of me. And Jesus said to all of us as disciples everywhere, every time we break the bread and drink the cup, we are declaring the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's pray. Father, we come to you right now. We're so grateful that Jesus went to a cross to reconcile us before a holy God. So as we take this bread, which represents his body and drink this cup, which represents his blood of the new covenant, may we remember the great links that you've gone to bring us back into relationship with you. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
king forever We thank you for the cross And we thank you for the 